Uh, hi, everyone, and good morning. I uh, appreciate you all being here. I am super excited to present uh, You Need a Jay-Z and a Beyonce, uh, how sponsors and mentors can supercharge your career. My name is Anthony Hendricks. I'm a cybersecurity and data privacy attorney based in Oklahoma City. So while I am a lawyer, I am not your lawyer, and this presentation should not be considered legal advice. Instead, think of this as a conversation between friends, but if you need legal advice, please, please, please find a local lawyer that can help you. I also host a cybersecurity podcast that focuses on exposing underrepresented groups to the field of cybersecurity and data privacy. Uh, and you can find the podcast anywhere where great podcasts are found. So what are we going to be talking about? Well, we're going to be talking about the best rapper alive. So at the 2024 Grammys, Jay-Z took the stage to accept the Global Impact Award. And so this was a kind of career-defining moment. It's, it's one of those big awards uh, for Jay-Z. But instead of just talking about himself, he spent a large part of his speech talking about someone else, talking about his wife. And he amplified her accomplishments. He defended her artistry and uh, tried to change the perception of her among the Grammy voters. And so while the speech was met with a lot of criticism, a lot of pushback, people were pointing out that that wasn't the purpose of that speech. Uh, it pointed out something else. It pointed out out what the role of a sponsor is. Uh, we're also going to be talking about Beyonce. And so why are we going to be talking about Beyonce? Well, Beyonce is Beyonce, right? So any excuse that we have to talk about Beyonce is probably a good one, right? Um, but just looking at more research about her, she illustrates what a mentor is. And so oftentimes people get the terms sp sponsors and mentors confused. Right. And so what I want to do today is talk about those two things. But I want to use examples so that when you leave here, you're thinking, OK, I know what a mentor is because I know what Beyonce does. I know what a sponsor does because I know what Jay-Z does. And, and so that allows you to find what you need in your career because you know what those items are. And while both of them are important for you in your career. So what are we going to talk about and what is the order? So we're first going to just have a conversation about mentors and sponsors. We're going to talk about what those terms are. We're going to look at some research uh, from some of those leading kind of business uh, uh, articles and, and publications. And then we'll talk about Jay-Z and Beyonce and why you need both of those in your careers. And then we'll talk about how you can be a better mentor and how you can be a better sponsor if you're in that stage of your career. And then how you can find a mentor, how you can find a sponsor and how you can be good at that job. Because being a mentee and being a protege is a difficult job as well. And you need to be good at it so that people want to invest in you and invest in your career. And then uh, at the end, we can have uh, whatever questions uh, that you want. And then I'll be handing out some cybersecurity stickers as well. Sound good with everyone? All right, so let's rock. So mentors and sponsors. So everyone needs a little bit of help. And so mentors and sponsors can play a meaningful role in your career. They've done that for me. Um, but they do more than just help you get a promotion, right? They, they do more than just help you get that next job. They also help with retention in organizations. They help reduce burnout and they help limit career frustrations. And so those are all types of things uh, that can be roadblocks in your careers and having a mentor and having a sponsor uh, helps you avoid those issues. And they play a more significant role for diverse and non-traditional workers, right? Um, they help you when you're entering into a new field become successful. And so mentors and sponsors are important for everyone, but they are especially important for people who are entering into the field who are often underrepresented. So what exactly is a mentor? What is mentorship? So mentorship is a relationship uh, between you and somebody who is sharing knowledge and providing guidance. Um, so think of a mentoring as you um, directly having a relationship directly with a person where they're encouraging you, where they're giving you advice. Um, that's pretty straightforward. I think we all kind of understand what a mentor is. It's that person that's giving you that kind word. They're giving you a little bit of advice and are pointing you in the right direction. And so there are different types and different flavors of mentoring. So there's this traditional model called the guiding light. So this is where you have someone that's a little bit older than you and they're saying, hey, you know, I've seen it all. I've gone through this. And so let me walk you through kind of these issues. And let me point out some things that you may not kind of understand. So this is kind of that traditional model of a mentor that you think about that older, wiser person. 
Uh, but there's also another category called windows. And so these are your colleagues who have already experienced these issues. Um, they're closer in age to you and they can provide you firsthand experience of, about what's going on. And so I, I like to call these the Jay-Z rule. So Jay-Z once rapped, Hove did that, so hopefully you wouldn't have to go through that, right? And so these windows are your peers, and they're telling you, hey, this is what happened to me, and so learn from my experience so you won't have to go through that. Uh, and then we have mirrors. So mirrors, these are usually people at your level who can help you identify your strengths and your weaknesses. And so they may not be giving you actionable kind of guidance on what you should do next. Instead, they're having a conversation and they say, hey, you're really good at, at giving talks. You should do more of that. Or, hey, you know, uh, maybe you should work on your writing because you always complain about getting a lot of feedback from your writing. So maybe that's something you should work on. And so they're not kind of giving you uh, the, the recipe on what to do, but they're kind of reflecting back to you about areas that you're good at and areas where you may need some improvement. And because they're on your level, it feels like you're just having a conversation with your friends. So what do mentors look like? Uh, when you think about a mentor, you really think about that older senior person who's investing in you, but that's not always the case. And so sometimes it can be your peers, it could be somebody on your same level, or maybe just one rung above you. And so you can find mentors all types of places, and mentors can be any type of person who wants to invest in your success. So what a mentor is not. So mentorship isn't focused on only teaching you skills. It's not a training program. And so a lot of times when people think about a mentor, they're thinking, okay, they're just going to teach me a bunch of stuff. Sometimes, but that's really not the focus of your relationship. It's a relationship driven kind of process. And it's less about criticism, but more about being your personal hype man, that person that's encouraging you to do something, telling you, hey, you should apply for that. Hey, you should do that. Um, they're kind of just giving you that pep talk, that encouragement, uh, that push that you need. So let's talk about what sponsorship is. And so uh, one of the classic examples, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, is Jay-Z's relationship with rapper Mint Bleak. And so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But what exactly is sponsorship? So this is where a senior leader is spending their social capital on using their influence to advocate for their protege. And so mentorship, when we talk about that, that's a two-way relationship. It's you and your mentor, right? But when we talk about sponsorship, it's a three-way relationship. It's your relationship uh, with uh, not only the protege and the sponsor, but also with the audience, the people that the sponsor is trying to change the perception of you. The persons that are going around and advocating and telling, hey, this person that I'm working with is great. They're a future leader, they're a star. Watch all the wonderful things that they're doing. So it's a, it's a three type of relationship. So what exactly does this kind of sponsorship relationship look like? Well, it kind of falls into a, a couple of different buckets. So one is amplifying your protege's accomplishments. So oftentimes people don't like to brag about the great things that they're doing. That's fine. Your sponsor, that's their role. They're going to talk about, hey, did you know that last year they did X, Y, and Z and they accomplished all of those things? And so your accomplishment sounds so much better when other people are saying it, especially when it's someone who has a lot of credibility in an organization. Along with that, sponsors are betting their reputation on your future success. Uh, they're saying that, hey, I'm gonna give this person a bigger project, a bigger task, because I believe that they're going to be able to accomplish this. And so they're giving you that opportunity for you to succeed. They are betting on you being successful. Um, then also they're sharing their goodwill and letting others know that you are their protege. They're going to let you know that this is my person. This is the person that I'm supporting. This is the person I'm advocating for. Uh, I like to call this your Rockefeller chain. Uh, so if you've seen any of the members of Rockefeller rapping, they all have their chain. Uh, that's the symbol of the label. So everyone knows that they are with Rockefeller. They're with Jay-Z. And so that's him giving his goodwill to them. And so a sponsor is also a defender. That's a big part of their role. And I, I think it's probably the most important. Um, they defend you from criticism. And if needed, they offer explanations for why something might have not been as successful as you wanted. Um, and this is important because oftentimes when you have a 
sponsor, they're going to give you these big projects, these big stretch activities for you to do, things that you might not think that you can accomplish. And they're giving you that opportunity because when you are successful, uh, now everyone knows that you should be a leader, that you should be promoted, that you're ready for that next kind of role in the organization because you had a task that was a little bit beyond you and you found a way to be successful. And so they're, they're going to protect you from criticism and then they're going to explain if things didn't go out, uh, happen the way that it should have happened. And so what is the impact on your career? You know, mentors and sponsors are so important and mentorship can help you develop stronger and more valuable relationships at work. It can provide you access to uh, important decision makers. It can help you develop social skills and create kind of new ties with other people. Uh, mentors act as an endorsement and a signal of respect uh, from others. And so why is this relationship important? Why is this relationship important to have? Well, when we talk about cybersecurity in this industry, it's hard for organizations to be able to keep employees. And th there's a lot of different reasons why. Um, but one of the reasons why people leave the organization is a high level of stress and a lack of support, right? Those are some of the common things that happen. And so mentorship kind of aims at those two types of things. So mentorship can also reduce burnout. So workplace burnout is increasing. And compared to two decades ago, people are twice as likely to report that they are suffering from burnout at work, right? And so what is the cause of burnout? Well, according to studies from HBR, loneliness and emotional exhaustion at work lead to burnout. And mentorship and the connection that it creates can help reduce this feeling of loneliness at work uh, and ultimately can help you with the issues of burnout. And burnout is extremely costly for organizations. Uh, it results in a 37% higher absence rate, 49% uh, more accidents at work, and 16% lower profitability. And so it's important for organizations that employees don't feel burnt out. And one way to do that is to invest in mentorship. It's also costly for you, right? A study from UC Irvine found that it reduces longevity by 70%. And that's a pretty, pretty shocking kind of uh, a number. It's more, uh, the reduction is more than alcoholism, more than drugs, more than all of those types of things. Uh, and, and so burnout can be costly for organizations and for yourself. And one way to fight this is to fight loneliness and develop real relationships with people who care about you. So what are the benefits of sponsorship? Well, sponsorship equals promotion. So sponsorship is one of the strongest predictors that we have for promotions and increases in salary. If you have a sponsor, you're likely going to get promoted. You're likely going to make some more money. It's the great equalizer. Uh, when it comes to promotions, sponsorship matters more than someone's gender, personality, level of education, and experience. It is a game changer for you if you're entering into a career. People with sponsors also have a higher level of career satisfaction. You get more fulfilling feeling at work because you have someone who's looking out for you, who's giving you these great assignments. They're putting you in a position where you feel like my career is moving forward. And that comes from your relationship with your sponsor. So what exactly is in it for the sponsor? Well, it's a two way street. So if you're a sponsor, uh, there are some great benefits that you can have. Senior executives who have a protege are 53% more likely to have received a recent promotion. I think people kind of understand that if you're investing in other people, the organization is gonna invest in you as well. Uh, and this works even at people who are at entry level who sponsor someone else, they're 167% likelier to have gotten a recent stretch assignment. And stretch assignments are the best way for you to show that you have these new capabilities, new skills, so that you're moving on to a higher position or a different role with a better title. All right, so let's talk about Jay-Z and Beyonce. So you need a Beyonce. 
Uh, mentors provide encouragement. They help you celebrate your wins. And that's Beyonce's roles. And so I'm going to look at a couple of examples. But oftentimes when you ask young artists uh, who are R&B singers about who their mentor is or who they aspire to be, uh, they're going to say Beyonce. And let's look at a few TMZ style uh, examples. So let's talk about this guiding light model that we talked about earlier. So I want to talk about uh, Chloe and Haley, and this is an R&B group uh, signed to Beyonce's label. And in interviews, uh, the group consistently refers to her as a mentor. They can refer to her as family, uh, not just because they work with her, right? It's because their careers are mimicking hers. They started uh, singing at a very young age. Beyonce started at a young age. They're in a group trying to transition and navigate uh, being their own solo artist. That's exactly what Beyonce did uh, when she moved from Destiny's Child to a solo career. And so Beyonce has seen those difficulties that they're kind of facing and she's able to talk to them about it. She's able to explain, hey, it's going to be rough in this area. Hey, making the transition from being seen as more of a teen artist to a more of an adult artist is going to be a transition. And I made it. And here are some things that I've seen. Here are some roadblocks and some issues that you're going to have to address. And so she's serving as a guiding light uh, for those young ladies. But she also serves as a Mara. And so let's go back to the Grammys, but let's not go to the 2024 one. Let's go to the Grammys last year. And so Lizzo won the Grammy for record of the year. And she actually beat Beyonce. Uh, and during her acceptance speech, she talked about how meaningful and inspiring Beyonce was. Uh, but afterwards, people were asking her, can you kind of just explain a little bit more? And so in interviews, uh, she talked about how Beyonce offered kind words, how she offered encouragement, and talked about her strength as an artist. So she pointed out things that Lizzo was so great at. And so you've got not only encouraging words, but you've got someone saying, hey, here are some things that you are great at. Now, I don't know if anyone told you that today, but you were really good at these particular things. And she served as that Mara for Lizzo. And so that's an important role that mentors can play. So now let's move to the world of business. Let's give you some business examples, right? And so more than 70% of Fortune 500 companies offer some form of kind of mentoring, a mentoring program for their employees. And most of these programs don't achieve uh, what they set out to do. So in 2017, researchers at Harvard Business School conducted an experiment at a US call center. And what they did was they said, all right, we're going to create a mandatory mentoring program for new employees. It's a four week, four week program and it is mandatory for uh, employees. And so they took a group of the new employees and those employees had to do the mandatory training. And then they took the other group and they said, hey, you have a choice. You can do informal mentoring or you can say, no, I don't want any uh, informal mentoring. And then they compared the results. So during the first two months on the job, the people who had the mandatory four week mentoring program generated 19 percent more daily revenue than the unmentored individuals. More than 90 percent of the revenue gain uh, was sustained in the six month period afterwards. And so just four weeks of mentoring at the beginning allowed them to still keep those same benefits as they moved further along in their career. It also meant that people were more likely to stay at the organization. They were 14% more likely. Now that sounds like a small number, uh, but when you deal with call centers, uh, people be in and out of that place all the time. So 14% is a big number if we're talking about a call center. So the mandatory mentees also outperformed the people who had informal mentorship. So people who said, hey, I'd like a mentor, and then they just had an informal mentorship program, people who had the structured, required four week program outperformed them. And after the experiment, the US call center adopted this mandatory program. And even after taking away the cost, the added expenses that it might come from setting up this program and implementing it, they had a 870% return on investment. And so you got your money back multiple, multiple, multiple times. Now, along with having a Beyonce, you also need a Jay-Z. 
So we started the presentation by talking about Jay-Z's speech at the 2024 Grammys. But what exactly did Jay-Z say, right? And so just in case you weren't watching, um, let me just pull out a few phrases and uh, we can talk about that together. But you know some things? I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone. And so what exactly is he doing here? Well, he's talking about Beyonce's accomplishments. And I think people just don't sit, sit down and realize that she has the most Grammys ever. And it sounds much, much better coming from someone else instead of having her to brag about her accomplishments. Somebody else was doing that for her. And this is extremely important because oftentimes uh, women are less likely to brag about their accomplishments. And so that's why sponsorship is great because there's someone there who could say, nah, I'll say it. If you won't say it, I'll say it. And so we also talked about how sponsors have a relationship with the audience, the people who they're trying to change their perception. So you attempt to change how people view your protege. And so I'm gonna pull out a, just another quote from Jay-Z and his speech. More Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about it. The most Grammys, never won album of the year. That doesn't work, right? He's changing the perception of the audience. He's talking to those Grammy voters. He's trying to change how they view Beyonce, how they view their award, and how they should view Beyonce's artistry. And so he's able to have that conversation because he is Jay-Z. He's somebody who's accomplished himself. And he's also using that moment where they gave him a lifetime achievement award to tell them about how they're not doing their job. So let's look at another example. And I like to talk about Jay-Z's relationship with Memphis Bleak. So Memphis Bleak was the first artist that Jay-Z signed to Rockefeller Records. They grew up in the same neighborhood and Bleak has been with Jay his whole career. Sponsors share their goodwill with their protégés, and we already talked about how uh, he's wearing that Rockefeller chain, but he also uh, uh, brings him on tour. He brought Memphis Bleak on tour when all he had was 16 bars from one of Jay-Z's songs to perform. He had no other material to perform, and Jay-Z took him there and said, we'll figure it out as you go. Uh, you better go to the studio and create a new song, but I'm gonna put you on stage, and people listened because they were there to hear Jay-Z, and he shared his goodwill with Bleak. But also, sponsors give stretch assignments. So while mentoring is less about criticism, Sponsors are required to give that tough love, right? Because your protege's career is intertwined with your career, right? When they see that person, they see the sponsor. And so you need to have those kind of real conversations to say, hey, here are some things that you need to fix. Because when people see you walking around or see you doing those things, they're immediately thinking about me because I've given you all of this goodwill. And so uh, Bleak does a lot of interviews on podcasts, uh, and he had one, a couple of ones on this podcast called Drink Champs. And he admitted that Jay-Z told him he was lazy. He sat down with Jay-Z talking about, hey, wh what's next? You know, I'm thinking about what I can do next. And he started listing all the things that he wanted to do. And Jay-Z said, hey, Bleak, you know what's wrong with you? You're lazy. You're not working hard enough. You stop working hard. And he started telling him about all the things that he needed to do to be better. But it wasn't just tough love, it wasn't just criticism. He then gave him a stretch assignment. He said, all right, you're telling me all the things that you wanna do. And he handed him a bottle of Douce liquor and said, you're gonna sell these. And so now he's an executive for Douce liquor with no uh, undergraduate degree, no marketing degree, no nothing. Never sold uh, any liquor before, but he said, hey, I believe in you. Uh, this is my company. This is your stretch assignment. Go to all the meetings, learn about the business and be a leader in the organization. And he gave him that stretch assignment. So let's look at an example from the world of business. Um, so a bank did an internal kind of research on why their female managing directors left their organization. Like, why were they leaving? And they were leaving not for work-life balance. Most of the time people say, oh, we shouldn't even care because they're just leaving for work-life balance. They don't wanna work hard. And that is not the case. 
people were leaving because they wanted a promotion. They wanted a bigger role in an organization, and they weren't getting that from working at their company. They weren't getting those internal promotions. And so they left to go somewhere else where they could further their career. And so they said, okay, we need to stop this. We need to figure out a way to be able to keep these uh, managing directors in our organization. And so what they did is they created a sponsorship program with the goal of assigning more women to critical posts within the organization. And so the program prepared uh, paired protégés with executive committee members to increase uh, their exposure to these senior leaders, these senior leaders who are going to be making those decisions. Um, but they also ensured that they had an influential advocate. And so you can't advocate for someone that you've never met, right? You can't advocate for someone you don't have a relationship with. And so they started building that relationship. And so ultimately they were able to find that one third of the people who participated in this sponsorship program are in larger roles within the organization within one year. And another third of the people in that uh, kind of participated in the program, executives said, hey, we feel comfortable with them being promoted to the next level. And so you either got a promotion or you're about to get one. And so that is a great kind of results from a sponsorship program. So let's talk about getting a mentor and getting a sponsor and being good at your job as a protege and a mentee. So one of kind of the downfalls, one of the kind of issues uh, with uh, being a mentor and a sponsor is that sometimes you can confuse those terms, exactly what they mean, right? Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about it, so we're not going to be confused because we're going to be thinking about Jay-Z, we're going to be thinking about Beyonce. Um, but I want to use the example of Ursula Burns. And so Ursula was the CEO of Xerox, Xerox from, 29, uh, from 2009 to 2016, right? And she was the first black woman to lead a Fortune 500 company. When asked about what helped her get this role, she talked about the mentorship that she received from the company's two prior CEOs. And so she used the word mentorship, right? But when we started asking her about examples, what she was describing was sponsorship. And so it's not uncommon for people to conflate those two terms and it can lead to troubles and issues. Uh, when she was in middle management, the then CEO of Xerox uh, showed her the difference in leadership of a company versus being in charge of a department. And he started giving her more responsibilities, kind of bigger projects that people can see. And this led to big risk for her, but it also had the potential for big rewards. And one of the things that was really important is that the former CEO gave her a lot of air cover. So what is air cover? Basically, uh, he protected her from criticism and allowed her that time that she needed to take those big swings, to do those bigger projects, to do things that may have been outside of her traditional job description. And so that led for her to have all of these great opportunities and she didn't have to fear about someone talking bad about her uh, or criticizing her because she was doing something else beyond what her role was because she had the big boss going around and telling people, no, 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 she's doing what she's supposed to do. I think she's the best person for this job. So he provided her a lot of air cover. Another kind of problem with sponsors is that sometimes sponsors act like mentors. And you may be saying, well, that's fine, right? You need a mentor, you need a sponsor. So what's the problem? Well, a study from the Center for Talent Innovation found that sponsors themselves don't really understand the role and how to do it well. And so only 27% of people who answered the survey uh, who identified themselves as being a sponsor uh, said that they advocate for a promotion of their protege, which is one of the big things that a sponsor should be doing. They should be saying, hey, there's a position open. I know the perfect person. That is my protege. I think they are the best fit. Uh, and 19% reported uh, that they weren't providing, uh, only 19% reported that they were providing air cover, that kind of protection that's important. And so a lot of them are missing out on the key things that are required to be a mentor and, and so to be a sponsor. And so gaining a sponsor is more challenging than getting a mentor. 
So it's important that people who actually had that skill set, the people who had that high credibility, those people who are in senior leadership positions, it's important for them to know what a sponsor is and to do the things that sponsors do, because not everyone can do those things. It takes a special type of person with a special type of ability and a special position within an organization to be an effective sponsor. And if you have those people with those skills not doing the real things of sponsorship, then people are missing out. Another thing is men are more likely than women to find sponsors. And when women do find sponsors, their sponsors are more likely to not do their full job of sponsorship. So sometimes they'll be like, yes, I got a sponsor. And then they say, so you're gonna recommend me for this promotion? And their sponsor says, oh, I, don't, I don't do that. They're not doing their job as a sponsor. And so that means that these people aren't getting those full benefits. Another kind of issue to avoid when it comes to sponsorship and mentorship is that our sponsors and our mentors need to avoid this mini me syndrome. It's not uncommon for people to want to work with people who are just like them, right? You start saying, oh, I see myself, a younger version of myself in this person. And you go and you invest in their career. Um, and so the Center of Talent Innovation found that 71% of mentors say that their chosen mentee is the same race and the same gender as them. And so it's not uncommon for people to want to do that. I'm not saying that anybody's a bad person for wanting to invest in someone who they see themselves in, but it does create problems because there are fewer women, there are fewer people of color in the senior management positions. And so these employees are often excluded from meaningful mentorship and meaningful sponsorship when people only want to mentor or sponsor people who are exactly like them. But this also hurts your mini me, right? Uh, the best mentoring, like the best relationships occur when there are some similarities, but also some differences. And so if you're looking for someone that's exactly like you, you are doing a disservice to the person that you wanna help and that you wanna invest in their career. So when mentors or sponsors um, mentor someone that's different from them, it leads to long-term growth. And so a study that looked at mentorship of medical residents found that while same gender mentors provided this initial growth and this initial help because they're saying, hey, I had to deal with these issues, the exact same thing that you're going through. Um, but after a while, those benefits that they got from that mentorship became stagnant. Their growth became stagnant. Um, however, for opposite gender mentorships, um, while they had to get over that initial roadblock of, of figuring out how to talk to people, how to find that common ground because they thought that they were so different. But after they did that hard work of having those meaningful conversations, uh, they were able to lead to long term growth for their mentee um, because their relationship was built on all of those kind of mutual uh, um, factors that they had to work on and build and find out together. So let's talk about being a better mentee and a better protege. So I always like to talk about how do you get a mentor, right? There's all of these wonderful articles that talks about the importance of a mentor, the importance of a sponsor, and you read all the way through it and it doesn't tell you how. There's no recipe in there. And so I wanna just talk about a few ways that you can find a mentor. So how do you find a mentor? Well you ask. Um, getting a mentor is easier than you think. People are often excited and happy to be asked to be a mentor. And finding a mentor is easier because there are so many options. It can be somebody that you work with. It can be somebody outside of your organization that's in the same industry. Uh, it can be someone that um, you only have occasional conversations with. Maybe uh, you talk to them on LinkedIn about things and ask them questions. Um, it can be somebody who's more senior in an organization, or it can be somebody who's your peer or a little bit uh, lower in the leadership uh, category. And so there are mentors all over the place and you can have multiple different mentors to fill all of the different needs that you may have. And so it makes it a little bit easier to find mentorship. So how do you get a sponsor? Well, sponsorship requires some work. You gotta do a little bit of legwork here. 
because sponsors are using their political capital on you, they often want to see some initial success before they invest in you, right? They want to see a couple of quick wins uh, so that they know that they're not wasting their time. And so you build credibility by performing well and taking responsibility. So do your job and do your job well. And that's kind of the starting point. Uh, when you find someone you want to be your sponsor, you should research what their role is, how they got there, and kind of understand what their current priorities are. So you kind of take all of that into consideration when you finally sit down and ask them to sponsor you uh, in your career. I think it's important uh, when we talk about being mentors, uh, mentees and to be uh, protégés, you have to remember that it's a two-way street. You're not just taking. Um, you should bring value to your mentor and your sponsor. Uh, this includes teaching your mentor or sponsor a new skill set. So oftentimes uh, I will teach uh, other more senior lawyers uh, how to use certain types of technology and they'll sit down and talk with me about business development and growing my book of business. And it's a trade and it's a two way street. You should also kind of think about other ways to help them extend their legacy. A lot of times people want to be sponsors because they view that as a way to extend the legacy that they've created. And so if you kind of know that, uh, you can kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're having those conversations because you understand what's important to them. So what are some other ways that you can be better at being a mentee, better at being a protege? Well, know what you need from your sponsor and your mentor. What exactly do you want to get out of kind of this conversation? What do you want to get out of this relationship? Because if you know exactly what you want out of the organization, uh, out, out of that relationship, then you can ask for it and you can know when you're not getting the things that you want. If you clearly explain what your goals are, you're more likely to get that. When you get a project or a task, you need to focus on over delivering, right? If your mentor or your sponsor says, hey, I need you to do something, then you need to be laser focused in on doing that work and over delivering, especially at the beginning of that relationship as you're trying to build that trust, right? You should be focused on doing that work. And then you need to be respectful of their time, but you also need to respect your time, right? So if you are meeting with someone um, who you're building that relationship with, you need to be on time. You need to be a little bit early. You need to be respectful of their calendar. But at the same time, you need to demand that they do the same thing for you, right? Um, and if you do that, people are more likely to not cancel meetings last minute because they know that uh, my uh, mentee or my protege respects my time, but they also demand that I do the same. And so these are just a few small little things that you can do to be better at being a mentor uh, or a mentee or a sponsor or a protege. So what did we learn during this presentation? Well. People forget about half of all new things that they learn within an hour of learning it. So it's not uncommon for someone to say, hey, you were at uh, B-Sides and you went to this higher ground. What exactly did you learn? And you're gonna be like, I don't remember, uh, but he did a great job and I love his suit, right? <laughs> but it's not your fault. The human brain can only focus on six to nine pieces of new information before there's this big, steep drop off. So. I have six takeaways so that if somebody asks you, what exactly did you learn? You can maybe remember one or two things. First, mentors provide encouragement and guidance and serve as a sounding board for ideas. Sponsors are advocates for their protégés. Having sponsors and mentors can lead to personal and professional growth. Four, people often confuse the two which makes them less effective. Five, you need a Jay-Z and you need a Beyonce. Six, it's a hard knock life and we all could use some help. So ask for mentors and ask for sponsors. All right, so if you like the slides, like the presentation, it'll take you to my website and you can download the slides uh, this afternoon because I haven't uploaded them yet, uh, but they'll be on the website and then you can 
push the button and uh, you can get the slides for this talk so that everybody has them. So I think that's it for me. I do want to thank my law partners because uh, they allowed me to come out to these conferences and hang out uh, all week at uh, Hacker Summer Camp and give out cybersecurity stickers. Uh, so yeah, I want to thank them. And I also want to thank the associates who are working on my cases because they are working right now and taking care of the cases so I could be here with you. So thank you so much. And I think we have a few minutes. So if you want to have a conversation, uh, uh, feel free to ask any questions. Thank you. Hey, uh, so I actually wanted to ask, um, in your career journey, did you have any struggles finding a mentor or a uh, sponsor? And when you finally did like come to one or more that you had a positive relationship with, what were like the traits that really locked you guys together? Yeah, so it was a lot easier to find a mentor because you can find all types of mentors. I have a ton. Some of them are my mentors about business development. Some of them are people who, when I just need a pep talk, I've had a bad day. I know that this person, they are going to be my hype person. They're just all going to be talking about all the great things that I, that I do. And so I have some of them within my law firm, some of them outside of it, but sponsorship was harder. Sponsorship was a hard process and it's an ongoing process, right? But when I think about what are the qualities of a sponsor, uh, it's someone who understands what that role is. They understand that I am coming to them uh, not for a pep talk. I don't need a pep talk from you. You know, I got a whole bunch of other people that'll tell me good job. I'm coming to you because I need to be promoted uh, within the organization. I'm coming to you because I need to be put in a better position to have a bigger book of business, to be able to get better cases. And so they understand what the assignment is and they do that. Uh, also, another trait is somebody who wants the job, right? There are a lot of people who have that kind of capital, but they don't want to do it. They're thinking that it's too much work or they'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. And then when you sit down for a meeting, the meetings just keep getting uh, uh, kicked off of their calendar. They keep pushing back your meetings weeks and weeks. So you, you need someone who understands what they're supposed to be doing and who has the time and the willingness to do so. And so those are kind of the qualities, but my sponsors are, are, are very different than, than me, right? You know, I, I don't have someone who, you know, looks like the older version of me, uh, but their career looks like the version of the career that I want. Thank you. Um, are there any mentor courses or programs that you can recommend? One of the challenges I've seen in my experience is that people want to be mentors, but there is a lack of um, understanding or, or, I guess, rigor around what that means and how to execute on that effectively. No, that, that's a great question. Um, so when I do presentations, I always say Anthony's selling nothing. Uh, so I have no courses or anything that I'm selling. And, and when it comes to kind of courses that are out there, you know, I don't have any that I can recommend. But what I would say is if you start looking at people who are advertising those things, you should have your own list of things that you want and what they're offering should match those things. Right. And, and a lot of times there are people who are selling these courses uh, about all of these things and they really don't know what they're talking about. So if you have your list, you know, you're put in a good position. When you're thinking about, sorry. When you're thinking about being a sponsor, what do you look for in your sponsees? Yeah, so the thing that, you know, I will eventually be looking for is someone who likes to do the work, right? Somebody who enjoys kind of the practice of law or whatever kind of area that I'm the sponsor for. Uh, and then somebody who's had some successes. They don't have to be huge successes, but you have to have, you know, done some work, uh, kind of put yourself out there to do it. And, you know, that kind of gives me the signal that, hey, me giving you the push is all you need because you have a lot of talent there already. And so, you know, I want to see someone who kind of enjoys or, or is good at and who has like put themselves out there to kind of do that work. Right, we got one. 
In your slide, you mentioned that mentors should really kind of know, or I mean mentees should know what they want to be able to find a good mentor. Uh, what about someone who's new to an organization and may not know what they want, who still kind of wants a mentor? Do you recommend they do some research first or would you still advise that they look for a mentor? Yeah, so the thing about it is you may not know all the things that you may want from that organization, but you probably have a good idea about what you want from your career, right? You're like, hey, you know, I want to be able to learn skills. I want to be put in a good position uh, to be exposed to different people. I, I, I want, you know, I'm dealing with maybe some confidence issues. I want somebody that's going to spend some time encouraging me. So those are things that you can know that you want before you may learn about what exactly uh, um, your organization has to offer, because you can have mentors inside of your company, but outside of your company as well. Hello. Uh, what is the what would you say is the cutoff if you pick a bad protege? Like, at what point do you say, "Hey, um, this isn't for this isn't for you. This isn't for you know this." And yeah, at what point? Uh, so I, I'm laughing because I took the slides out uh, slide out about that um, because I was going to use an example. Um, but um, my secretary, when she was looking through my slides, she was like, that's a little problematic because I was gonna talk about Jay-Z and uh, Kanye West. And she was like, take Kanye out of it. No Kanye, no Kanye. But you know, Kanye talked about uh, Jay-Z being his big brother. And then that relationship eventually changed. And uh, you know, while they're civil and maybe trying to reconcile, uh, that relationship changed. And so what you should do is you should be thoughtful when it comes to that, right? you should be giving your protege every opportunity uh, to meet your expectations. And so that often requires you to tell them what your expectations are. If you have not told them what you want them to do, you can't be mad that they didn't do those things, right? And so you need to have that conversation first. Uh, and then you need to kind of present them a path forward. Hey, you know, here are the things I'm expecting from you. Right. I gave you this stretch assignment and I want you to do it. But because everybody knows you're doing that stretch assignment because I gave it to you, I need you to check in and just have weekly check ins about what you're doing. You know, they don't have to be long. They don't have to be. And you're giving them what you want and you're giving them a path forward. Now, if they failed, consistently failed at that, that's when you need to have that conversation. Um, and the problem is when you're a sponsor, you're not only having that conversation with that person, but you're going to have to start having that conversation uh, with the broader community because you put your capital into them. And so when they think about that, your protege, they think about you. So you're going to also have to have conversations with other people. And so that is a big kind of punishment. Uh, and so you need to be very careful about it. You need to give them every opportunity in the world um, before you make that decision. Time for one more. Okay. So not a question, but I just kind of wanted to add on to what you're saying about uh, as someone who took on too much with a group of people and was consistently failing and had to pull out, the thing that helped was a direct, honest conversation about like, these are the things I need from you. If you cannot meet these expectations, then I these are the things that I am losing if you uh, cannot meet them. Um, I ended up pulling out and then I was able to like excel in all of my other areas as well because I was just taking on too much at once. But that's kind of what I would say from the mentee perspective from someone who had failed. I just want to say that was a very smart thing to say and it wasn't a failure. You learned. See what you just did? Good deal. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to be around. I got some cybersecurity stickers if you want one. Uh, and let's be friends. All right. Thank you. Thank you.